Hey, this is Mike for CG Toots Plus, and today we're going to be looking at some beginner modeling techniques for 3ds Max. Now, to familiarize yourself with the uh, methods and techniques that I normally use when modeling, uh, we're going to be making this robotic arm. And the first step to creating this uh, arm is going to be to make a block in. Uh, what we're going to want to do is to look for the underlying shapes of this object and create a model that is going to be as simple as possible. Uh, this will allow us to focus on proportions, scale, uh, the relationship from one, one piece to another, and make sure that everything is correct to our reference image. Um, you would generally want to do this whether you're using blueprints or a concept, a concept drawn by an artist, whatever it is, you want to start off with the block in to uh, assure that your, your proportions are right. Once those are set, it's, it's very easy to uh, up the level of detail and add in uh, smaller things like the wires, the screws, uh, little indentations, stuff like that without having to worry about um, moving everything once it's already created because this is too big compared to this or this is too small or it's too far over, whatever. Uh, creating the block in just makes the rest of the modeling process a lot easier. Um, so let me show you uh, what primitives I would be using in Max to create this block in. Um, Generally, I use the plane, the box, the cylinder, and the sphere as my main primitives. However, for this one, I think I will most likely be using the, uh, the box and the cylinder the most. Um, so let's break down the actual model. The lower section here would be uh, broken up into two parts, the cylinder and the uh, rectangle at the back. As you can see, I'm ignoring these pieces here and just looking at the underlying shape. Uh, the middle section would be a, uh, a rectangle and another rectangle. And the top portion would be uh, a rectangle and another rectangle. I would ignore these pieces and just create this shape right here. Same with this, I would keep this as one big rectangle all the way up here and ignore how this uh, thins out to meet that cylinder. As I said, once this is all set, it's very, very easy to uh, add more detail and um, doing it with the block in first helps me to keep the the mesh a lot cleaner and everything ordered and uh, it, it, it it's less of a headache when you don't have to move all these little pieces around because as I said something is off or the wrong size um, so with that said let's let's open up Max and start modeling this little arm All right, so let's uh, start modeling our block in. Now the first piece I want to build is going to be this cylinder. So let's start off with that. Uh, by going to the, uh, what is this called, let me see. To the Create tab, you're going to want to click Cylinder. And then click, drag, release, and drag again, and that'll give you your height. Now, in order to rotate around your viewport, you can either click right here, or you can use the hotkey, which is Control R. And as you can see, I just did Z will center the object that you have selected. So if you're all the way over here, and you want to go to this object and have it centered on your screen, you hit Z, and then Control R will rotate around. Now, some other viewport hotkeys would be uh, F3 which will toggle you between solid view and wireframe and then when you're in solid mode you would hit F4 which toggles whether wires are on or off. It's all fairly easy but those are the ones that I use a lot is uh, Control R, Z, F3 and F4. So now let's uh, let's build the back piece which is going to be a box and we'll go to top view for this one and drag it out, we'll estimate right now about right there looks good check our height and now you can see this gizmo is located it's actually on the bottom of the object right now and what the gizmo does is any editing that you do whether you scale it or rotate it uh, will happen from that point. So if I scale this object, 
it'll scale from the bottom half will stay in place and the top will go. So for right now this is fine. However, for this part, I want to make sure that it's centered to the object so that I can center it to the grid. So I'm going to go into the hierarchy tab, hit effect pivot only, and then center to object. And what that did, it was apparently centered to the object along the Y axis, but on the Z, it wasn't. So it'll center it to it. And now what I want to do to make sure that this is properly positioned on the grid is down here tells me where this object is located in space. But I want this, the Y axis, to be located on zero. So I can either type it in or I can uh, I can right click it which will zero out that spinner. So this works on anything that has these double arrows whether it is um, in the parameters wherever it is right clicking on the actual arrows will zero it out. Uh, so now let's just check this make sure it's properly in place and it is so let's let's start off with this middle section here we'll build this piece as a rectangle and then go to this piece which is also a rectangle and there we go Just effect pivot point center to object zero out and then let's affect the scale. And I'm using hotkeys for these buttons up here, which is W, E, and R. W, E, R. Now let's build this piece here, which is going to be a rectangle as well. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then spin it around and replace this into space. Once again the scale, the location of the pivot point is helping us at this point but we will be changing uh, changing the pivot point in a second here to make sure that it's located properly on the grid. Okay get out of the effect pivot point only mode so that we can scale the object and this looks like it should be good okay actually make sure this one's centered right which it is I want to scale this out a little bit actually same with this piece okay now let's uh, take a look at the at the top. Hop into top mode. Place this side that the pivot point is on where I want it and then scale it accordingly. And then do what we've been doing the whole time. Effect pivot point, center object and zero it out to the center up oh, make sure you're off effect pivot point and zero it out to the grid and now we are set for that piece now let's add the very last section which is going to be this part right here and about that big maybe a little bit too big but we can adjust that in a second once again pivot point is in a good spot Uh, zero it out. Right click. Hop into the modifier panel and in order to edit the vertices I want to right click on the box and hit edit poly. Hit one in order to get into the vertice mode and then scale 
those vertices and position them how I need them. Uh, the hotkeys for these would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then 6 will take you back to the object mode. So now let's just check this. Check it against the reference. Just make sure our, our rough sizes are close enough. Pull this one a little bigger. Which it looks like it's good enough for a for a block in. Normally I would have a blueprint which would let me uh, check it a lot a lot closer and be a lot more precise with it. But with this one we're just eyeballing it, so it's not it's not a huge deal if it's slightly off. So now for last thing, let's go ahead and uh, rotate these as it was in the picture. So let's affect the pivot point and pull it down to where this part of the model is going to be pivoting from. And then rotate it. Make sure you're rotating with the angle snap toggle on. Uh, that keeps it at increments of 5, which makes it easier to rotate it back vertically and straight. And uh, the hotkey for that is A. Uh, so let's do the same for this piece. Place it where it's going to be pivoting from and then place it over the object where it's, it should be and rotate this piece as well. And then position this one where it should be. And that should be good for our blocking. Uh, as I said, it would be more precise if we had a blueprint, but we are, we're just eyeballing it for now. So let's go ahead and add some more detail to the, to the model. All right, so on the break, I took the opportunity to make some minor adjustments to the model. And now let's look at adding some detail. Okay, so we're going to start off with the lower, the lower portion here. And all we're going to have to add to it is uh, this, this big extrusion on the back, the cylinders that are on this rectangle piece, uh, this extrusion on the front uh, on the cylinder and also this little rectangular piece down here. Uh, we're going to try to bring this up to a level that would be used in a game um, and then from there we can step it up and you would add more detail, all the little tiny fine details and it would become a high poly mesh which would then be used to generate a normal map for our low poly mesh which is what we're going to work on now. So. Let's, uh, let's start by working in this rectangular area back here, and then we'll just keep moving along uh, up the model. Um, so we'll start off with this piece, and the first thing I want to do is to round off this corner here, like you can see right here. Once I do that, I'm going to duplicate this piece to start as the base for this piece. A lot of a lot of what I do, I try to reuse as much as possible to keep it as quick as possible. So the first thing we want to do is to use the connect tool. Uh, so you can see we're going to adjust, we're going to use slide, which adjusts where it is located on the ring that you've selected. And you have to have a ring selected or else it will not work. Um, so you would select one edge and click ring and then it would go all the way around. So we're gonna need it about right there. Hit apply, and that lets you, it keeps the window open. Select these, this ring right here, and we're gonna be using two segments on this one uh, to go a little quicker. We're gonna use pinch to separate, it determines how far apart they are or how close they are. Uh, so you're gonna adjust that so that there's a nice little square right, right here although actually it did not apply because I didn't hit apply so make sure you hit that um, so let's go ahead and select these these two vertices here I'm gonna pull it in about halfway and scale it in a little more and adjust that till the the curve is how you want it in this case that should be more than enough so now we're gonna use this mesh slower mesh here to create this part right here. So 
you're going to switch into element mode. You're going to select this whole entire element. And we are going to hold shift while we're in the move tool and pull it up. Okay? And then hit OK. Make sure that it's on clone to element. It keeps it within that object. Now we are going to scale it to the proper size for this piece. Right now just looking at the top you will worry about the height in a second. Okay, so now the top is set. We want to adjust the height. And put that in place on the on the larger rectangle. Okay. Now as you can see these are they're pretty much the same shape, so all we had to do was some slight tweaks to the size and that was it. The only other main difference is this this right here. The chamfer um, along the top edge. So we're going to want to select the entire top edge all the way around except for the very front which as you can see doesn't have that uh, that little angle there so once that is selected you want to click on the chamfer tool which also has a uh, the settings most if you see a little box here clicking that will give you the settings and allow you to uh, edit the size and placement and everything of pretty much every tool to give you a more exact cut or uh, chamfer or extrusion or whatever the tool is that you're using. So I'm just going to do this manually however for this one. Uh, another cool thing for this tool is that it allows you to change the amount of segments in between and it will calculate and round off the chamfer there. But we don't need that for right now so we're just going to do this. And from there our piece, that part of the uh, of the model is now done. All we have to do for this back part is add this piece and this piece. So let's go ahead and make a cylinder. Jump into top view there. Now, how the cylinder creation works is you drag it out and then you release and drag it up. So what that does, let me show you in a in an angle view here. It creates the the radius and then you adjust the height. So that's how you would do it. Just the radius and then the height. Now it doesn't matter all too much here. Uh, don't hit F1. F1 is bad. It's annoying. Okay, but next we'll adjust the height once it's actually in place. That's about the size, maybe a little bit wider. And there we go. It's good. Now we're going to use this same exact cylinder to make this tube right here. Once again, doing this just to save time. You can, if you want to, you can make a totally new object and then attach it, but I normally will just do it this way and try to reuse as much as possible because it saves a lot of time for me. So adjust that to the right height, scale down the radius a little bit, and that's about it for, for that back piece. Everything else we will add in the next detailing step and uh, so on and so forth until you have this model up to this detail. So now let's go ahead and uh, create this little extrusion right here and then this rectangle piece. Now the tools we're going to use for this are going to be the inset and the extrude tool. What inset does is uh, essentially what its name is. It insets the polygon that you have selected. From there we're going to want to use the extrude tool which extrudes it, the, met, the polygon that you have selected. It's fairly straightforward and easy to understand. I'll pull this up slightly. Now once again, these all these have the, uh, the settings that you can adjust and uh, to get a more precise 
uh, inset or extrusion if you want to be making a couple of these around the model and you want it to be the same exact size and you'd want to set your setting and just do it that way so that it's all the exact same thing. So now let's go ahead let's add the uh, this little rectangle down here. Now remember when you have created a new primitive you need to right click and convert it to an edit editable poly. And that lets you adjust uh, edges, vertices, uh, faces, the element as a whole. Um, so you need to be in an edit poly to do any sort of editing to your mesh. And for now, that looks good. Okay. So for a low poly model, this would be fine, uh, depending on if you wanted those wires to be in the, the actual low poly model or not, this would be f uh, more than enough to create a, detail, a more detailed mesh from. So we're going to leave this at this level for right now and move on to the, to the middle section. Now we're going to build this piece, even though it's a rectangle here, we're going to start from a cylinder. So let's go ahead and do that. Same thing, set the radius, pull out the height, go into top view and make sure our width is the same as our block in, which is the point of the block in. And now the, what we're going to want to do is connect the two middle uh, vertices in order to make a flat top. Uh, as you can see, there is one right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Convert to add a poly. Go to vertice mode, select the two middle uh, vertices and connect them. Now that they're connected, we can use, we can select the loop and use the chamfer tool to add that top ledge. And then select the front half, pull it forward select the other side and pull it to where it's supposed to be on the back. Now this cylinder is scrunched up some more on the actual model so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Scale it just along the x-axis. Keep an eye on down here it'll say how how much you did uh, 50 percent, 25 percent. Um, I did 50 so I'm gonna make sure I do the same amount on the back just keep it going till 50. Now we're set. Drag that once again to where they're supposed to be based on the blocking. And now that piece is set. Uh, adjust that however you need to. And now let's go ahead and start on these pieces right here. Now there's two ways you can do this one as well. You can either start from a cylinder or you can start from a sphere. However, I'm going to start from a sphere because it's closest to what I'm looking for from this. So let's go uh, 16, 16 segments. Go into side view. You want to keep it somewhat low as 32 is a lot, which is the uh, standard starting amount. So now we're going to go into the front view and scale it down this way. As you can see it's kind of squashed and the front is cut off. So that's what we'll do next. We will convert to editable poly. Select those first vertices there and delete them. And now we will be using the boundary, boundary option here to select that hole, that gap, sorry, there we go. Select that gap and cap it up. Give put a what cap does is it puts faces and fills the gap there. Whenever you have a boundary you can you can do that. So that's boundary is good too to check um, in case you have a hole somewhere inside your mesh you can just use boundary and try to find where the hole's located. Um, 
Now the next step we want to do is we want to split this in half so that on there's half on either side. But we want to keep it within the same object. So how you do that is you would go to detach and instead of detach as a new object you would detach to element and that'll keep it make it a new element but it will keep it within the same object which is what we wanted so now let's unhide everything unhide all and place this in the right spot perhaps pull them out a little bit scale them to the right size and now let's create that the uh, middle rectangles. Now we're going to build it from our block in mesh, which it is going to be fairly easy because all we have to do is adjust this this face here, pull it in so that it's hidden, and adjust this one as well. Check the front, make sure we're pretty close, which we are. Grab these vertices up here and get them so they're not sticking out. And now what we're going to want to do is select this middle ring, go to connect settings, and we're going to use pinch to set the two new loops on the edge of where it's supposed to be, which is right there. And now we're going to press 2 to get to edge mode and we're going to select the ring. Now, what I want is to delete these middle faces. So since we have the ring selected, all I have to do is hold control and click on the polygon. And then it swaps me over to polygon mode with that same selection. So now we're just going to delete that. And once again, we're going to use boundaries, which is three on the keyboard. And we're going to hit cap. And that'll fill in the gap with a face. And there we go. Now the, the middle bars are now ready to go. The next thing we want to do is copy these up top to here uh, where they'll be the upper rotating devices. So let's go ahead and hit 5 to go back into element mode. Select these two pieces, shift drag up to about the center I'm just estimating this now because this upper piece is going to change a lot once I start actually building the shape. And let's go clone to element. And now we can attach all the middle section into one mesh. And we will leave that until we fix this top part up. So let's take a look at the top section and see what it's made out of. Uh, it looks like it's actually made from the same shape as this one down here. So we can duplicate this twice to get both these shapes and then build everything else on top of that. So let's go ahead and do that. And also, we're going to be making an instance of this in order to make it easier. We don't have to work on an angle then. Now what an instance does is when you are in object mode and you shift click, it brings up this clone option. Instead, it's normally on copy. Instead of being on copy, you want to throw it into instance mode. And uh, what that does is everything that's done inside, or actually, wait a second. Before you do that, make sure you have it as an editable poly, or else you'll lose the instance. So then you're not in any mode here. Shift click, make sure it's instance. And what it'll do is anything that happens within these modes here, outside of ob the actual object mode, will happen. To the other mesh, the other instance. However, if you hit six and you're to get out of these modes and go into object mode, nothing that you do there will affect it, which is really great because now what we can do is make sure that it's straight like this and not angled, and it'll be a lot easier to work on this one and it'll transfer right over to here. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. there. Just the size is, it was a little bit, oh man, see. Just once you create an instance, make sure that you remember to take that option off when you do another uh, 
clone because you'll mess up the other mesh and it's easy to forget like I just did. So let's bring them together a little bit. Let me duplicate this. Not right there. Okay. Now align this. You want to make sure it's aligned to your instance mesh. And attach it. And as you can see, it is now the same exact thing happened to this mesh. And we didn't have to worry about rotating it properly and adjusting it to this angle. So let's go ahead and delete this block in box as we're not going to use it again and work on this front portion right here and then we'll build this this top connector piece so let's go ahead and start with the cylinder uh, we'll, we'll use the instance mesh to make sure that we place it correctly and then we'll make sure it's lined up right on the other straight uh, instance. Let's go ahead and scale it to the right size and then attach it and that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to make this piece. Once again we are going to use something that's already made. So we're going to use this uh, the cap of the cylinder here which already has this nice curve here and we just have to flatten it out for the back so let's go ahead and do that uh, W for move tool shift click and then okay now we're gonna go into the side view scale it up slightly and start to edit these vertices to the shape that we want. Which is that then there's a flat section. Right about there. And then this piece. Both these pieces. can actually get rid of those by hitting backspace and it'll straighten it out for us. So now we have this piece made however it's just a single plane as you can see and we're going to need to add some depth and uh, geometry to that. So how we're going to do that is to detach it from the actual object just for a second. Detach to object. Now it's, it is its own object we're going to use the shell modifier which adds the depth that we need. As you can see you can adjust the inner mount, you can adjust the outer amount, the amount of segments, whatever you need to adjust can be done in here. And then you would right click and collapse all. Hit yes, you're good to go. Now attach it to the actual model, to the actual object and duplicate it across to the other side. Hmm, let me see something here. Oh, looks like we have an error here. Looks like this has been deleted, which actually is good because I'll show you how to fix it. This, uh, when I hit backspace, I hit backspace and had one of these selected, so I'm going to have to fix that up. What you do is you select both vertices, hit connect, and it creates an edge across there. Now what we need is to have another vertice here to connect to this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the cut tool, which is another tool I use a lot. Um, it's right here, cut, you click. When it switches to that, that means you're on a vertice and will build onto that vertice. So you want to make sure you're on that vert there. Click it 
and drag it across to here, to the other uh, edge you just made, and put it in the center. And then right click and you're out of the cut tool. Switch to vertice and go to your side view and pull this one down to be as close as possible to that other vertice. And now it is all fixed up, as you can see. So let's unhide everything and get back to work. Uh, the only thing we have left to do for this piece is uh, build this connecting segment up here. So we're going to build it in very much the same way as we did this, uh, this piece right here. We're going to create a basic outline of the shape itself and then give it depth using the shell modifier. So let's pull this all the way across, go into side view, select both these edges, hit connect, and it gives us a new, a new edge. Pull that over, do it once again. Now I probably should use the pinch and connect settings, which I'll use right now. So you can see it's a lot easier and a lot quicker. And then these two will pull down and create that little dip that was on that piece. Pull it up a little bit to account for the, uh, the depth that will be added once we use the shell modifier. Make this a little deeper. Select the element and detach it as we did before and pretty much do the same thing. We're going to add a shell modifier. It'll already be set. Collapse it. Yes. I want to scale it in a little bit and then attach it. Now all we have to do is adjust where we want it, duplicate it and rotate it around to the other side. Now you'll see I have this on right here, um, angle snap toggle. What it does is it rotates it only ten deg uh, 5 degrees, increments of 5, which is really good because then you don't have to remember what how much you rotate it and it'll always be the same exact increment. So I generally have that on a lot unless I need to rotate it slightly and not at 5 degrees each little bit. So now this this piece here is pretty much done. All we have to do is adjust it to the center of, of this uh, circle here and add this piece right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll build the cylinder, set the radius, set the height, go into top view and adjust it where it should be. Side view again constantly going back and forth. I'm, I'm doing it, normally you would have, or I would have it like this and have a couple windows open so I can just go back and forth, but I want to do it bigger so it's easier to see. Oh, also, Alt-W will uh, maximize a window when you have multiple windows open. So just something to remember. So let's go ahead and scale this down. Add another cut using connect okay scale that out and pull it back in to make the little lip that is on is right there this piece right here is sticking out a little bit too far so pull it back in a lot of the work is going to be just little adjustments and building up your uh, ability to see those little proportion and size changes you need to make and in time it'll come and be a lot easier for you to uh, do it easier and quicker. So now let's connect to that, attach it to that mesh and now we are set. We just have to do this uh, this last piece here which we're going to, this piece is probably going to be the most simplified of them all. Uh, what we're going to be doing is looking at this as one shape creating this cylinder right here looking at this part right here as one shape and then building this so even though it's extremely complex and 
if you went into a more detailed mesh, it would be multiple parts. I mean, even just there, there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's a lot of parts. But we're going to simplify it, simplify it for this low poly mesh. And uh, later on, we can add more detail if we want. So we're going to do the same exact thing for this one since it's angled at a weird angle and there's going to be a lot of little stuff we're adding to it. We'll do the same thing we did to this one. So let's go ahead and duplicate it. Make sure it's on instance. Rotate it down so we can see it. And then rotate it so it's straight. So next step is going to be to round it off and give it that little bevel like we did to this piece right back here. Just we're going to do it to all four sides. So actually what I'm going to do to keep it simple and easier instead of having to select all those new edges, select these ones. Chamfer it. Do the same for the bottom. And actually, we're going to do something tricky here. We're going to select this, go ring. Now we have the ring selected, but we want these two up here selected as well, so we'll hit loop as well. And that'll select the loop of the, all the rings selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the settings for this. And we're going to hit 2, which will round off that edge pretty much exactly the same as it did for this piece just without all that extra geometry and it's a lot quicker you have to, normally you would have to connect stuff like this in order to make it uh, if you're gonna subdivide it to keep it as an all quad mesh which um, for subdivision you want four-sided uh, faces throughout the whole model which is why you would do that uh, but it's not hundred percent necessary right now for this type of model. So let's go ahead and look at adding the, the little details in here. So we'll start off with that cylinder. We will do like we've been doing for the whole time. Uh, set the radius, set the height, then drag it up from the grid, which I took off. G disables the grid, just so you know. Hotkeys are going to be a huge help for you. Uh, in speeding up your process and learning them and setting them so that it's easier for you to remember is is going to be extremely helpful. So we're going to hit connect. We're going to want to create this part right here, how it goes in, how it bevels in. So set that. Click the uh, top face. Scale it in. Maybe bring this up a bit. I think I want to make it a little wider. Now duplicate it across to element and attach it. Now this piece here is going to be all one piece. So I'm going to drag this over here so that I can see it because it's kind of a tricky shape. Okay, so I want to build it like start off with a box, make it an editable poly. And now I'm gonna this one is gonna take some thought because I gotta check continuously check that reference picture I have. Now this doesn't have to be a hundred percent exact because it'll be adjusted once you build your high poly model and get all that detail in there and you'll want to make sure the low poly model is close to what you've detailed it with so that should be good I'm going to build a cylinder here in order to make it look like it's actually connected not just like sitting there so now that's set drag both of these up to just underneath that bevel. And the last piece we have to do is this part. So let's 
and then well actually last two pieces and then this piece right here that connects it let's go ahead and do that Rough size is good. And let me check the, the height. Ooh, height looks good. Set it in place. And then I'm going to actually do this here. If you have an instance, and I'll show you how what I mean. Um, if you have an instance and you want to mirror this piece right here, okay? And you use, or you want to use shell or something, and you have a modifier on top. When you collapse it, that that mesh becomes, um, it's no longer an instance. So normally what you would want to do, let's see, let me show you. So we add a modifier. We add the mirror modif modifier mirror it over the z-axis set it in place and collapse it what it does is it collapses this mesh but it doesn't do it to this one so you want to save either save it till the end or separate these to their own object mirror it and then bring it back into your instance um, for this for this case it doesn't matter all that much because it's easy enough to to copy again so I'm just going to do that I'll delete this one because I need to make a new instance drag it over set it pull it down a bit rotate it back to straight and we're set again so now we're going to make this piece which will just be a rectangle and another cylinder so fairly straightforward as you start doing it more, you'll be able to look at even complex objects and see that it's how easy it would be to build from uh, a rectangle or a, a cylinder or a sphere. Most, pretty much everything can be broken down into that one of these very simple shapes that we've been using throughout this whole project. Um, it's just a matter of trying to simplify everything and not focus on all the details. Once you do that, it really becomes extremely simple uh, to understand and grasp. And the more you do it, the quicker you'll see those little shapes. So now let's adjust this piece to fit properly. And then duplicate this piece and mirror it. Actually, we don't even need to mirror it. Just drag it over. Let me bring that in a little bit. Okay, and now we can delete these two because we're not using them anymore. And this would be uh, an acceptable low poly model for uh, to build your high de high detailed uh, high poly model from. Um, normally, you would then have to come back in and adjust the actual model to fit the new details that you've put in but this would be a really good starting place to uh, build your high poly model from and uh, that's about it for for this lesson I hope you hope you learned something and it was helpful and I hope you uh, tune in for the next the next video tutorials uh, yeah good luck with all of your modeling endeavors